Greetings, viewers, and welcome to today's info sharing session. We will be covering the lot tracking feature within Sage Trend Evolution. Now, lot tracking allows you to track lot numbered items when transactions are being processed. So every time there's a transaction processed for a lot numbered item, a prompt appears, and you will then require to insert the lot number so that there's suitable tracking kept on all lot number tracking transactions. Let's see exactly how that works. So I'm going to go add a lot numbered item under inventory maintenance. I'm going to add an item and um, just call it and we'll give the item description. And very importantly, we need to mark the item as a lot number item. So I'm going to mark as a lot number item. And you will obviously then add the relevant information for the item that, or that is required under defaults, information, pricing, etc. Right, so I've got my item created. And now look at a couple of options. We're under maintenance. <clears throat> We've got lot tracking statuses now. There are really de four default lot tracking statuses being not approved, approved, rejected, or expired. So your lot numbered items or lot numbers can have one of those four, one of those four different statuses. And then very importantly, we've got the option under maintenance, under defaults, we can have a default lot status. So if I go to my inventory defaults, in the inventory, we've got a default lot state. In this case, it's case not approved, and it's either going to be approved or not approved, depending on what the situation is within your organization. So ours is saying to be not approved, and I'm going to say okay to that. And now it's really a case of going to go and receive stock items or lot numbered items via your GRV. Right, so we're going to go through to inventory transactions, which receive voucher, and select the supplier. And at this point, I'm going to go find the item and specify quantity. And what you notice is that we've got a lot numbered columns. So if I go in there, I now need to specify details of the lot item or the lot number that I'm receiving from the supplier. So I'm going to say, give it a lot number, which obviously would be from the supplier, or you can search your own lot number. Then very importantly, lot numbers need to have an expiry date. So I'm going to put expiry date there. Right, and I'm good to go. So very importantly, I've got my lot number, expiry date, and I can continue. And it's simply a case of going to go and um, insert your supply invoice number and then go and process the invoice. Right, I've got my details there with the information for my supply invoice. Okay, so at this point, remember is that with lot numbered items, it is a one to many relationship. So you can have, for example, one lot number consisting of multiple units. So if I now go back into my, do another GRV and pick up the item, on my lot numbered item, I now have two, I always have two options. Creates a new lot simply means is that a new lot is coming in with a new expiry date, or it's possible that I could be receiving goods on an existing lot. So if I say existing lot, it's simply a case on my drop down, I'm going to go find that particular lot number and select it. And what you notice, obviously, the expiry date is not accessible simply because a lot is an existing lot. I can then say, for example, new lot, and then
and I can process this transaction. And let's just go, um, just go change expiry date there. Right, there we go, that's better. And process the transaction. So when receiving goods, you've got the ability to specify an existing lot or a new lot, depending on the circumstances. Right, so once that's processed, we can continue. Now remember, on our defaults, we've had a default lot status to be not approved. So there could be instances whereby perhaps before you decide to put the goods or sell the goods, you want to maybe sort of uh, do some quality control checks, make sure everything's in order. And once that has been completed, you can then approve a lot and then allow it to be sold. So to do that, we're just going to go and change, we've got to go out to maintenance, got an option that says lot tracking. And at this particular point, we can change lot status. So I'm going to go pick up the lot number or the lot item. And based on that, I can pick up the lot number. There we go. And it tells me that the status currently set not approved. And there we have an expiry date. So I'm going to change the status at this point and make that approve it. And now I can say, for example, Right, so we can insert a reference number there, and I can say process. Now the status has been set to approved, which means we can now go sell the item. So I'm going to close that, and we can then move on to an invoice, where we can now go sell items on that lot number. I'm going to go to invoice, and specify the customer. At this point, I need to go specify from what lot number am I selling these items. So I'm going to go lot. And you notice is that the create new lot option is not accessible simply because when selling goods, we can only go sell goods from an existing lot. So on the drop down, I've got my lot number there, and I'm going to select it. What you notice is that we only have one lot number appearing simply because the other lot or the second lot that we, that we received on the GRV was not approved. That status is still set to not approved, so therefore it can't be sold as it can't be sold as the status is still set to not approved. Right, so I'm going to specify my approved lot and the just select it again. There we go. There's the expiry date and I'm good to go. And then it's a case of simply processing the transaction and, and then go print the document. Right, so what you notice is that we can certainly go and customize the layout and display the lot number on the actual invoice. So by default, on the default layout, you won't have lot number appearing, but you can certainly go customize the layout of the invoice or the, or the document in order to display the lot number item, which we have displaying over there. Right. Now, there could be certain instances whereby you, the customer returns certain items, which are lot numbered items. And in that case, we need to press a credit note. And I'm going to go to my credit note screen. I'm going to use the open button to go and locate the invoice and load that document as being linked. All right, so there we go. Find the document, there we have it. And I'm going to load the document as linked. Right, so at this point, um, we can then simply say the quantity being returned and once again, the lot number, and we've got the details there that we can specify the lot number 
in which the items are being returned. So we're going to leave it as it is. All three items are being returned. And I can simply say, process the transaction. Of the credit note. And if necessary, I can always just go add the lot number and customize a layout to include the lot number on the credit note layout. Right. We also have the ability when doing an inventory count to specify information about the lot numbers. And if I add a new count, I'm simply going to go to my inventory tab and only count the lot numbered item. And what you notice is that we can sort of also filter on lot statuses. So I can say, for example, only count lots that are approved, not approved, rejected or expired. And we can then continue and just do a normal and generate the stock count. So there we go. And I've got my count. So if I go to my edit quantities, we'll see that we've got the item there and we've got a listing or a line item for every lot number. So the, the count would be done and then you would simply come in here and then specify the quantity counted for that specific lot number. So in this particular instance, say for example, five were counted there and this instance there was six. So it's going to ensure that you uh, kept the quantities counted per the different lot numbers and then obviously variance is applicable if the system quantity and lot number quantity are different. Right, let me say save and close there. And if you are going to be importing inventory count, under the import option, you'd create your import file and then you'd certainly have the default fields being the item code and the count. And then you can also go add the lot number to your file, which would obviously be important when importing information so that, that the count quantity is allocated to the correct lot number. So you can certainly go customize the import file to include lot number and import those details with those three columns. Right. So we can then, uh, we've got our details there, the count quantity. And it's simply a case of updating the stock count. And if, if applicable, the variances will get posted um, if the system quantity and the count quantity are different. Right, then we also have reports relating to lot numbers. And under inventory reports, we've got a lot tracking listing. Now this report just gives you details about the lot numbers. And you'll see that we can filter on a specific lot number or a specific inventory item. So if I go, for example, to the item itself, I can do a preview. It'll give me details about the specific lot numbers, their statuses, expiry dates, and the current quantity on hand. Once again, I can also do a filter on expiry dates where I can want to see, for example, which lot items have, have expired. And then I can take it a step further and also go look at, for example, a specific lot number. Right, so there we go. Got my details there. And I can also filter on a lot on a specific lot number. If we then move over to the lot tracking transactions report, once again with the same filter options, but if I go, for example, to the item preview, I've got details about all the transactions specific to that lot number or that inventory item in this case. So firstly, there was on that lot number, there was the items coming in via GRV. There's our quantity. Uh, we then had a second GRV with additional quantities coming in. And then what happened, we then went to go and change lot status from not approved to approved. So there I've got my details, no quantity in or out in this particular instance. It was simply a case of changing the lot status. And then we had the 
invoice, three, three items going out on that lot number, and then also just the credit note indicating that there was return of those items on that lot number. So as you can see, the transactions listing report for lot tracking gives you a full breakdown of all transactions which are specific to a certain lot number. And once again, you can also just go and uh, filter on a specific lot number, specific item, as well as the expiry dates. So as you can see, the lot tracking feature allows you to keep tabs on all lot numbered items and every transaction is going to have uh, a line item which allows you to ensure that you've got full control and know exactly where the lot numbers items are, who they've been sold to and who they've been purchased from, etc. I do hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for watching. It's over and out for me and goodbye.